This is the Transformers G.I. Joe collaborative Megatron hiss tank with the Baroness. I picked up this set from my local Toy Kingdom store for a whopping 6,000 Philippine pesos. It's approximately in US dollars, about 107 US dollars. A little pricey, but man, I was so excited to actually get this figure or this set. It's huge. The box at least is huge. It's got some fantastic box art in front. On top, you get Megatron as the his tank. On the side, you get the Baroness with the his tank. Uh, here on the other side, you get Megatron and done in the specs, uh, the G1 specs. And then on the back, you got the photoshopped images of the actual contents of this set. It really looks amazing. Now, I'm very happy that Hasbro went with the old G1 styled uh, packaging for both Transformers and G.I. Joe Transformers. I don't have a G1 Megatron to compare this with, but the purple and the grid design really is reminiscent of the old G1 Transformers toys. But I do have a retro... His tank. The art that they used for this set is really comparable to what we were used to getting back in the day uh, in the old G1 toys. This is a retro version. This is not a vintage toy. Uh, this is the His Tank 1, the His 1. Let's uh, crack this set open. You can cut the uh, adhesive or the uh, circular tape right here and on the other side so you can split this thing open. But um, that's great if you're going to use this as a centerpiece or you're going to display the box in your collection, but it's going to be a nuisance if you're just going to keep it in the bin or you're going to keep this in a cupboard and the both halves are just going to be splitting apart. Anyway, so that the box doesn't become a nuisance when you store it, we're going to slice or cut open the box from the side right here. Okay, and let's see. I mean, the material they use for the box is... It's pretty flimsy. I'm sorry to say it. It's it's a little soft, and as such, you will get a lot of dings uh, on the corners. Uh, case in point, look at mine. There's a bit of a tear in the ding because this the, the carry case or the shipping box is going to get banged up and tossed around. You're going to get a lot of dings, so it's a shame. I mean, Hasbro could have used better uh, materials since this is a premium item. Would have been nice. So, okay, let's remove the inner box. Now, the inner box is made of very, very stiff cardboard, like what we're used to seeing with the selects, uh, Transformer selects figures. It's pretty sturdy, so the contents will be protected. You can be assured of that. It's just a shame that the artwork is on the sleeve, and that's that's what's going to get banged up. So. G.I. Joe Collaborative 2022 Megatron His Tank. Uh, nothing. Oh, and top's the same. Right here on the back, you got Top Secret. Oh, there's no, there's no tape. There's no adhesive. Huh. That is weird. Okay. And there we go. There we have Megatron. Oh, what happened here? Uh, must have fallen apart. The twist tie is loose. It's okay. Pieces are still here. Everything seems to be complete. Okay, you get the instruction booklet, Decepticon, Megatron His Tank, and you get a carded O-Ring Baroness. So we get a beautifully carded retro version of the 3.75 inch Baroness. Very reminiscent of how the Baroness looked like back in the 80s when we got G.I. Joe's in this scale. It's got the backpack, the gun. Uh, oh man. Even the the card, the file card. You get the artwork right here. Transformers. Oh man, this brings so much memories. I always wanted a Baroness figure when I was a kid. I always saw it in stores, but I didn't have the money to buy it. My my folks would not get me one. Um, <laughs> GI Joes were were pretty hard to come by back in the day. And if you live here in Manila, you know what I'm talking about. The only place you could get GI Joes were Chinatown or Divisoria Cash and Carry and a store, a hobby shop called Nova Fontana. That was the only place you could get stuff. Okay, uh, I don't have, obviously, a vintage Baroness, but I have the next best thing. I have the retro-carded modern uh, Baroness figure. 
and you can see the card art is very much identical i love it that they've taken time to to give us something like this even the hasbro logo of the 80s is there it's such an amazing display piece now the question is do we rip open this figure and just see her in all her glory glory i mean a lot of you are going to say no keep it mint on card because it's so difficult to get it you're not going to get it as a single carded figure you you have to buy the the transformers collaborative but you know how i feel about mint on card mint in sealed boxes i mean years ago i would have kept this thing mint on card but nowadays because of my bad luck with hasbro it's best if I open up these things and just see if I get it, if I got a defective product or, you know, all the sorts. And, you know, the engineers at Hasbro, the designers really spent a lot of time uh, designing and putting a lot of effort in their in their products. So it would be a an absolute um, disrespect if if we did not go ahead and open it and and really just. Uh, appreciate how much work they put into it. So take everything out of the packaging and uh, we'll do the review on both of these figures. And here is Megatron with the Baroness out of packaging. And oh my goodness, this figure looks absolutely, incredibly ridiculous. The figure looks stupid. I'm sorry, but I don't know. It, I'm just not getting it. It, should look good on paper it should look good executed as a as an action figure transformers as a gi joe vehicle but somehow this figure just fell short of my expectations i'll, I'll get to all my nitpicks and gripes and all my complaints as usual but i just think that this figure based on the look of it it feels like in some alternate reality or multiverse, Megatron had crash landed on an Earth where G.I. Joe and Cobra were, were duking it out and there was no other pop culture. <laughs> and it was just the, the factions of G.I. Joe and Cobra. And obviously he'll pick the, the bad guys and he chose, he scanned a his tank and somehow the scan was sort of not complete. And his onboard computer did not know what to do with this alt mode and just made him look like uh, he's wearing some his tank armor. It, it it didn't make him transform into a his tank and the his tank transformed into a robot. It felt like he he retained his original robot mode and made the alt mode into an armor or of sorts. It, it just, I don't know, I'm sorry, okay? I know the designers have put a lot of effort into this and you know, all the promo picks made it look good, but in hand, up close and personal, the figure just feels lacking. Let's kick things off with the Baroness figure. Oh my goodness, this figure just has so much nostalgia to it. I mean, if you grew up in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. These were our figures back in the day, the original three and three quarters inch figures. And looking at them now, they feel kind of small. But when I was a kid, these were big. I mean, when I when I was growing up, when I was in grade school or middle school, you know, after Transformers, G.I. Joes were my go-to toys. I'd have a bad day and I'd come home, I'd go to my G.I. Joes. When my friends would come over, we would play uh, Super Nintendo or we used to call it the family computer, Nintendo family computer, then Super Nintendo, then we'd bust out the G.I. Joes and we'd, we would play all day. My brothers and I, we would set up the USS flag, the command center. Oh my goodness, G.I. Joes were our thing. And um, to this day, this has so much nostalgia and I'm, I'm just happy to see it. This is the modern day Baroness, the modern version of the Baroness, the retro version, which I showed off earlier in the video. You can see how far the G.I. Joe figures have gone. But I mean, if you are a big G.I. Joe collector and you want the old stuff and you couldn't get them when you were a kid, this is probably the best piece of accessory in this set because this Baroness looks great. I kind of love the fact that if you look closely at her head sculpt, she's giving you that Daria MTV Daria vibes and 
<laughs> you can see here so the better proportions are so much better now but i i love the fact that oh my goodness they painted the eyes and the the, the flesh tone doesn't quite match the flesh plastic that they used for the head sculpt i mean back in the day this was how toys were made and as i mentioned this was the original size of the 3.75 inch figures before the marvel universe and all those these new jack specific figures came out uh this is a Star Wars Kenner vintage uh, figure. This is the at at driver or at at commander, and you can see it's the exact same height, three and three quarters. Okay, so back in the day, it was pretty cool. Put that off to the side. She comes with a gun. This was how the gun was back in the day, and it came in in a weapons pack. You could get another color of this one in white or red or maroon and. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was way too big for her, but it looked great. She comes with a backpack, and if you take out the backpack, you'll see that it has a cross peg. That was how backpacks were uh, back in the 80s, uh, the cross peg. You would plug them into the, the back of the figures, and if I'm not mistaken, oh yeah, it still has that screw. That was the screw that you would, you would undo if the O-ring or the rubber uh, elastic would come off sometimes you play too hard and it would you split the figure apart you'd have to remove that so you can replace the the elastic and put it back oh my goodness i had dissected a lot of gi joes back in the day so this is an o-ring this was how action figures were done back in the 80s and these are the first things to break actually over the years the rubber elastic would become brittle and they would break so a lot of gi joes did not survive okay it came with a base uh, and a figure stand. And back in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about if you grew up during this period. This particular stand, this, this was traded as currency. I mean, it was so difficult to find these. You could only get them like, it came. they came with figures that were mail away figures and they didn't come uh, packaged with standard uh, G.I. Joe figures. So they were literally currency. You could you could trade Joes with, with, with figure stands. And, <laughs> you know, to this day, a lot of collectors take figure stands for granted that they're, they're, they're given, like they're part of it. They should be part of the figure. But back in the day, we never had these figure stands. And I remember my, ki my brothers and I we would pretend these were hoverboards, like, you know, back in the future hoverboards. And oh my God, those good times. So the figure does look great. Uh, the copy I got has some really nice uh, paint. No quality issues. I got lucky. The Cobra symbol, very nicely painted. And everything is done in this, molded in this glossy black plastic. Uh, you get that stamp from Hasbro. Back in the 80s, the articulation for these figures were just well ahead of their time. I loved Hasbro figures because I knew we would get full articulation. I would <laughs> pose them in the, these weird poses because I, because I, just because I could. Uh, compared to what we got with Kenner that had just five points of articulation. So yeah, in today's standards, you may think, oh, this is this figure is, is not is not it's 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 like the worst figure I've seen. Yeah, but for collectors who grew up in the '80s as kids, oh man, these figures were were the best. These were these were what we came, we came home to. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just. It's just a lot of nostalgia with these G.I. Joe figures. Okay, so Megatron as a Hiss tank. And, oh my goodness. It's just so much kibble. I, I do like the effort that they've put, that they've added a lot of high gloss paint on the waist piece or the, the pelvic piece. The fusion cannon is done in this really high gloss paint. Very nice. It's it's molded in black plastic and they painted it. Uh, the only thing, again, I'm sorry to be complaining too much, but in packaging, you look at it, it's so wonderful, wonderfully painted. Look at that high gloss. And then as you turn it around, the gloss kind of fades and it comes back right here. <laughs> Just the consistency, you know, uh, but it's okay. Also, you'll notice it's very light. Look at that. They made it hollow. Uh, they, they put this like spine in it, so it's very, very light, very hollow. Not like, you know, back in the day, we would have solid plastic pieces for guns. And then 
He's got this parts forming shield. I mean, come on, Hasbro. This is a premium product. You couldn't find a way to fit this thing in. I mean, it's all right if it was if it were detachable. I was okay, completely okay with it. But it's got a bunch of pegs and, and and some notches here and there that I wish they could have found a way to just stick it back here. Like it. It wouldn't have cost so much money to just find a way to just stick it right here, like a, another peg or, or a notch that would just nestle this this thing in, or maybe maybe like this. This is the only way I can think of that you you can store this piece while in robot mode, while not without using it as a shield, obviously. But there should have been a way to do it and. I'm sorry, it might be asking too much from Hasbro, but I just feel it's a premium product and they could have done that. They could have easily done it. It was a no-brainer. I mean, see, look at those pegs. So the if you saw it early in the video, this was the best place I could put it. That's the only peg hole available. And obviously you wouldn't, you'd, you wouldn't be able to put the Baroness in the cockpit. You'd have to peg her right there, but it's a shame. They could have done so much more. Uh, with, with with that piece, okay? So the Baroness can ride Megatron. Uh, if if you have him in robot mode, you can put the Baroness or any other 3.75 inch figure. She can ride him as a mech right there on the back. As far as articulation goes, the figure's articulation kind of sucks, okay? The neck isn't a ball joint, that's great. You get this wonderful head sculpt. Let me just quickly show it off. It's on a ball joint, so you can get a lot of expression from the head sculpt. There is no waist swivel, which sucks because uh, that's how the transformation goes. There was no room for a waist swivel. So, okay, you get that little bit of an ab crunch because of transformation, but a waist swivel would have been nice, would have posed him better. The arms can go in and out if you lift the shoulders, uh, the shoulder armor, and you go forward and backward. You got, a, I guess this is a bicep swivel, hinge, elbow, wrists don't move, okay? The other annoying bit is these plastics, they are, they're just flimsy as heck and they don't stay in. So every time you move the arms, they just, they just come undone. I don't know how to fix that. Maybe there's a way to do so. Okay. The tank treads right here, they are on ball joints so you can move them apart so that you can move the, the legs, the legs ratchet uh, forward and backward. They go in and out. There's a thigh swivel. Uh, a very tight hinge knee and then the feet they go up and down because of transformation no ankle rockers and now let's talk about my biggest gripe uh, with this figure and it's plastic quality okay I know I complain too much I'm sorry but these things are not cheap okay like I said $107 that's not e that's not even including shipping fee and all that it looks premium when you look at it, but it really feels very light. And, and you can hear it. There, there's a very soft thud. Now, I'm not saying you're going to bang about, bang around your figures here and there. I'm just saying a premium set like this deserves premium plastic. Case in point, a few years back, we had this guy, uh, Power of the Primes, Optimus Prime. It feels he's heavier than this guy. I mean, I can bust out my scale and he's probably gonna be heavier, but you can check the quality of the plastic back in the day. This was just a few years ago. You see, got a nice ring to it. This one, it's a very dull thud. And you can see right here, it's soft, softer than usual. You can literally bend it like that. The guns, again, you can bend it and back in the day look at this very very hard plastic and even further back you know 20 years ago look how hard that plastic is hollow and soft now okay you're saying back in the day sure plastic was cheap they could afford to do something you know, heavy and solid and all that. So you got to give this figure a break. Okay. But we did get this uh, from studio from the studio series line. This is the Coronation Star Scream throne. Look how nice the plastic is. 
You hear that? Really nice. I mean, it's hollow and all that. I, I get it, but look how premium this plastic is. It's so solid. This was the kind of plastic I was expecting from this figure. But we're getting Studio Series uh, Cyberverse quality type of plastic, which is a shame. I mean, they, they could give us something like this and they didn't. And I hate the fact that they're just playing on nostalgia and they kind of know that collectors like me will, will easily be bamboozled into getting something like this because of the nostalgia. And I hate that. I hate that playing, they're playing on our, on, on our nostalgia, on our childhood uh, toys and they're, they're cutting corners. Okay, sorry to belabor the point, but again, you know, was expecting a lot from this figure and it just didn't deliver. Okay, so let's do some size comparisons. Here are a couple of Megatron figures. We have the Netflix Voyager class uh, Megatron and the G1 Megatron. Here he is with his fellow collaborative figures. We got Ectotron and a gigawatt. So this is a Voyager class figure. This is a deluxe class figure. Now, the official statement, I think, and a lot of people are saying he's supposed to be a commander class uh, figure. So this is a commander class figure. This is a commander class figure. So what is it, right? Here we have two leader class figures. We have the leader class power of the Prime's Optimus Prime. We have leader class Ultra Magnus. And finally, we have commander class Jetfire or Skyfire. So he's, I guess he could be a commander class. He's, he's somewhere in between, at least in robot mode, he's somewhere in between a leader class, an original leader class, uh, scaled figure and a commander class. But with all the armor, the his tank bits and pieces going on, oh, don't forget this bit, bit right here. I guess the price point is prop is I think probably a commander class. So a quick rundown on the details, like I mentioned earlier, we've got a high gloss painted fusion cannon. We've got the shield, nice Cobra emblem tampoed on. We've got this huge backpack. We've got painted um, side skirts on his hips, and then his torso has some nice details. You got uh, the G1 colors, red, blue, and the nice Decepticon logo right there. Got some matte red for his eyes, some high gloss black for his brow. And then the shins, I guess the lower legs are painted as well. So before we get him into his tank mode, uh, this is the official robot mode transformation. I forgot to show off the heel spurs and the shield fits on his left arm. Now to transform him, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the instruction sheet and you want to get something sharp and just just stab and just throw that instruction sheet away because believe me uh you're better off transforming this figure on your own intuitively without the instruction sheet because the instruction sheet is as clear as mud i don't know what happened with hasbro they recessed and they just I don't know, they went backwards with their instruction sheets. So, okay, get rid of the accessories, the shield included. You, the instructions tell you to get rid of the guns, but you don't have to. Um, they can stay there and just, you just move them out of the way so that they're not, they're not blocking uh, the other parts when you're transforming the figures. First thing you wanna do, you wanna open up the shoulders. You wanna rotate the, biceps or the arms so that the yeah so that the forearms face this way okay at this point you can make sure you you bend this front part uh or the cockpit or the shoulders all the way forward so that there's enough clearance for these panels to go down same on the other side and then you put it back in and you form half of the underbelly of the cockpit okay next thing you want to do is you want to detach you want to detach this backpack like that just it frees up the shoulders and it, it can be annoying it's going to be very annoying at this point you want to do is straighten up the legs go ahead and fold this um, chest piece out just untab it this way so that you free up the shoulder pieces and then these pieces are going to go like this 
and then you know fold them up like this you it, it you get at this point you get a sense of how this thing is going to transform so uh okay just put things around and then fold the heel spurs like this and then you want to fold the feet this way like this and then bend that you want to bend the the ab crunch like this and what you really need to do is you need to bring down this piece these two um, waist pieces that are going to form the rear uh, tank treads you're going to tab in right here okay so if you can get to that position <laughs> that would be great okay uh, first tab Megatron's chest torso onto them and then fold fold okay and then tab these pieces right here okay and then just get him into that kneeling position and there you go Megatron <laughs> It's like a Happy Meal toy right, right now, okay? So just make sure you, you get the legs and these bits right here, along with the chest in this position. Okay, go ahead and fold up the this abdomen uh, cavity. It'll form the hitch. And then what you wanna do is these pieces right here, you want to collapse right here, and then you wanna fold them inward like this, like this, okay, and then the arms, they're going to shoot right here, okay, these two pieces are going to combine to form the cockpit, kind of just want to press that down, the arms down like that, and then the toes or the feet, you're gonna lock those arms in, in place. Like that. Just press everything down. Okay, but you need everything flush because this whole entire section, the backpack, is not gonna collapse in properly. Okay, so to do so, just uh, fold up the canopy and fold it up like this. And then here's the tricky bit there's a lot of tabs going on. There's some tabs right here that are just gonna get caught with the shoulder hinges so you have to like like move them apart i mean yeah and it's easy enough to do but i mean they could have fixed that clearance and then you just have to fold the whole thing down and somehow find a way to tab uh tab those pieces onto the treads and then tab these pieces onto the torso of Megatron. So once you, you've done the tabs right here on the rear for Megatron's torso, you just need to push down so that they lock into the tank treads, which is an annoying bit of the transformation because you have to exert so much effort just to push that thing down. Okay. And then finally, the cockpit can close right here. It doesn't close as well as I want it to be. So you can lift the cockpit a little bit just to catch that, that, that canopy and then you can leave it like that. But if you press it down, it's gonna, it's gonna un, untab that canopy. Okay, and you can stop right here. You can have Megatron's chest and torso and uh, head exposed. <laughs> that would be funny you need to attach the shield right here. Now, I realized why they did this. The shield had to be a separate piece because they couldn't put a hinge right here because it 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 would just be funny. The There would be no place to go because this, this would tab onto the back of Megatron and you'd have like a big panel floating above his head. And the, the only way I could think of is if this thing split, just like the cockpit, it, it should split they could attach hinges right here and it would have fold, folded right here on the back. He would have a bigger backpack, but he'd have no parts forming piece. So yeah, okay. So just attach that there and essentially that is the his tank. 
alt mode of Megatron. Now the gun, here's another annoying bit uh, that I noticed. Okay, you put it here. I agree, you know, the great, his, his biggest weapon should be the main weapon in tank mode, but he's, he's trying to blend in. You can't have a fusion cannon right, you know, on top of the turret because this is what a his tank looks like. So I'm thinking there should have been a way to attach the gun here, here, at the rear end, something like that. Or there's a ton of space right here. They could have utilized that to somehow fit the gun in. If they had given us a solid gun, they, they could have added a hinge just like Optimus Prime's gun. They could have folded this, this fusion cannon and it would have made it fit right here. Those are the elements of a premium set that, that's just sorely missing uh, w w with this figure. And kind of sucks. So we're not going to put this one right here for the time being so we can do some comparisons. Let me bring in a an actual his tank. Uh, this is the retro version. This is not an original his tank, obviously, not a vintage his tank, but this is the one that was released a couple years ago. And if you look at that, it is exactly the same. This is, okay, I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. This was great engineering for them to actually do an exact his tank and just cut it up and turn it into Megatron. Yeah, there's a lot of effort put in that and uh, I wanna give credit where credit's due. Okay, good job on that. But still, you know, they could have improved it. They could have done better engineering. Uh, prove this, they could have improved this transformation. But yeah, it it's identical to a his, obviously there's great bits right here, but in terms of the shape, the size, the aesthetic of, of the alt mode, it passes as a his tank. Look at that. The gun turrets, um, front part of the cockpit, the tank treads, even the tank treads roll. I mean, this these his tanks have uh, these rollers that allow you to roll it very smoothly. And this Megatron will have these wheels right here at the bottom. It's not as smooth as an original his tank, but it will roll. So yeah, even the tempos, they match the stickers. 788, even these bits right here, these bits right here, the GH7C. Uh, this one's a little different, but you get the idea. It's, uh, it's near close to being a robot in disguise. Ah, it's missing the knobs, the gauges for the turret, but that's okay. If you open the cockpit, very similar, again, in, in design. You still have the center console right here. And then uh, the seat, the his tank driver, it does fit here. He can also, I believe, fit inside Megatron. And it's actually a better fit because it's a little tight uh, in this his tank uh, for this figure. Obviously, you can put the Baroness figure that came with with this Megatron figure, but uh, you can put put Baroness there in the cockpit or the turret, and then the his tank. If you have a his tank driver, you can put him inside the cockpit, and then the alt mode will work for other uh, G.I. Joe, it should work. It doesn't work, man. So the pegs don't work. The pegs are for other Transformers. I don't get it. So it works for this one, but it doesn't work for a modern G.I. Joe figure. Hmm, that is weird. Ah, okay, so these pegs won't work for the modern G.I. Joe figure, but they will work for retro or vintage uh, G.I. Joe figures. You can mount them at the rear, and yeah, it's still a lot of fun. I mean, if, you, if you're if you building an army of his tanks, you know, you can get, if you need one more, this Megatron should suffice. So, yeah. In vehicle mode, in his tank mode, it's a lot of fun. But to be honest, the transformation is is really not not that enjoyable. Give you a size comparison with 
other collaborative figures. We have Ectotron and Gigawatt. So... And so some final thoughts on this Transformers G.I. Joe collaborative Megatron His Tank with the Baroness. It's disappointing. It's not a horrible figure, but it's not a great figure. One of the best things going for this set is really this retro vintage styled three and three quarters uh, O-ring Baroness figure. I mean, if you're a hardcore G.I. Joe collector, uh, you're going to be very pleased with this one. But the actual Megatron figure itself, I just did not enjoy this figure. The plastic quality sucks. I mean, they, they went cheap on us and they gave us non-premium plastic. They gave us soft studio series type of plastic when they should have given us really uh, the, the more premium, hard, solid plastic uh, that, that we've grown accustomed to with premium figures. The paint apps are okay, the head sculpt is great, but when you look at it, it just comes down to a Megatron, G1-ish styled Megatron robot uh, that, uh, that has some form of armor kibble on him that's made up of his tank parts, and that kind of sucks. Uh, articulation is not the greatest, It's it could have use a little bit more articulation i don't know how but they could have engineered somehow somewhere along uh, this area maybe some uh, better waist articulation uh maybe they went around the kibble i mean they tried to do so with the shoulders and all that but the baroness figure has better articulation than the megatron figure transformation for the figure is just the most unsatisfying uh transformation for a Megatron figure that I've seen. I did not enjoy it. It was a big mess just transforming him uh, from robot to his tank. With all that said, I think it's an okay set. If you're a big fan of Megatron, you're a big fan of Transformers, and you like G.I. Joe, you've been collecting G.I. Joe for the longest time, especially during the 80s when the O-Ring figures came out, you're gonna love this set. It has something for Transformers fans and for G.I. Joe fans. The set is going to get a six and a half out of 10. That's the best I can do. Uh, and it's mainly due to the my expectation that this was going to be an 11 or a 10 at least. Uh, but with all those things I said about this figure, I just can't give it anything higher than a six and a half out of 10. So let me know what you guys think of this Transformers G.I. Joe collaborative Megatron his tank with the Baroness. Hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.